so the point of next discussion in today's lecture will be food poisoning we will be covering three topics under this salmonellosis staphylococcal infection and botulism so first of all what is food poisoning eating or drinking contaminated food which causes injury or illness to the body is called as food poisoning food poisoning is also called as food borne illness and it is defined as a illness caused by eating contaminated food those contaminated with bacteria or microorganisms infectious microorganisms this can include bacteria viruses and parasites the toxins secreted by bacteria or these infectious agents are the most most common causes of food poisoning when you talk about food poisoning it can be categorized into three areas physical food poisoning is the physical hazards chemical hazards and the biological hazards contaminant can be biological it includes bacteria viruses yeasts molds even pests rodents insects flies maggots etc physical hazards include hairs fingernails jewelry plastics plasters or even soil and dirt jewelry which is artificial if it falls it has uh, coatings which can peel off and add chemical contamination to the food chemical hazards may also uh, include cleaning products such as pesticides fertilizers as well as incorrect use of food additives which are mostly uh, toxic chemicals and flavor enhancers essence etc which are not certified by the certifying agency like the food food authority or the government authorities the most common reasons of food poisoning basically are the food prepared is uh, too much time lag between the time of production of the food and the time of consumption of the food that is food is prepared far in advance and store at room temperature rather than in a fridge so if you prepare a food and keep it at room temperature in conditions like in summer the environment is very conducive for the growth of microorganisms and even the physical and the chemical quality of the food can be deteriorated second reason can be keeping the foods too long at room temperature uh, and uh, before refrigeration immediately heating may also give rise to some physical chemical changes in the food and may cause toxication or food poisoning uh, third point can be not reheating the food to current temperature means once it is kept at room temperature or let us say taken out from a fridge in a refrigerator the psychrophiles can also grow at room temperatures mesophiles can grow it has to be reheated while reheating if correct pasteurization temperature like 75 degrees centigrade flash pasteurization to destroy the food poisoning bacteria may be needed so if this correct temperature is not followed then there is a chance that the food may be contaminated now some more reasons for food poisoning may be pathogenic bacteria they are residing in the food these bacteria may be secreting toxins the food itself may be secreting toxins after certain period of time poisons which are naturally occurring in the food toxins such as plants fishes red kidney beans etc they have certain chemicals which if after some time they get converted and oxidized or reduced and may be added in the food and they will result into poisoning then the tin cans or the containers in which the food is packed if that is not of a good food grade material why for that even plastics plastic if it is not food grade then it will secrete certain chemicals in when it comes in contact with the food for long duration of time and metals and the metals from the tin cans they can be one of the basic causes for food poisoning as i earlier mentioned chemicals can also be one of the major causes so it is important to remember that large number of pathogenic bacteria are needed to cause food poisoning even if food poisoning is there it is not with a small amount of bacteria there is a certain level for example millions of bacteria are required to cause harm inside your body because your immune system doesn't allow the growth of multiple growth and multiplication of the bacteria we will see this in the further slides 
but bacterial contamination is one of the major causes for our study here and a concern worldwide uh, the bacteria which are present in the food they are one of the most common causes of food poisoning the harmful bacteria that cause food poisoning they are called as pathogens or pathogenic bacteria or disease causing bacteria the sources of contamination include raw food water soil people themselves their handling techniques their cleanliness their personal hygiene pests and pets which are there dogs cats etc and wide variety of pets people have air dust soil dirt food wasted food which is kept in the dustbin and it uh, stinks or it is getting deteriorated and microorganisms from that can give rise to cross contamination all these things are responsible for food poisoning but remember one thing as we have seen in the beneficial aspects of food not all microorganisms they are responsible for food poisoning only pathogenic bacteria they can cause food poisoning now when it comes to illness linked to food there are two types of illness two three types you can categorize but i will discuss here about two types food poisoning intoxication and second is food borne illness that is food poisoning and food infection when you talk about food poisoning try to understand it is by some metabolite or toxin secreted by the growth of bacteria bacteria by itself is not responsible the toxins or the antigens or some chemical secretion which is uh, taking place during the growth of the bacteria is responsible and it is called as food intoxication whereas food infection is due to the number of bacteria itself large number of bacteria growing are responsible for food infection now you should also remember here a small number of people are affected by food allergies also the symptoms can be confusing there is a subtle difference between the symptoms uh, amongst this because you see in all the cases abdominal pain is common but that doesn't mean that each and every food is contaminated so you should be able to understand the difference between food poisoning and food infection if you see the differences which i have shown here on the slide you will see that food poisoning is due to toxins food infection is due to the number of microorganisms growing at large secondly incubation period in food poisoning is very small because it is chemical reaction it takes place instantly whereas in food infection microorganisms need to grow so the onset of the disease that is it takes large time for the disease to show may, maybe two days three days six days once it is you are getting infected it will grow inside your body and it has to overcome the immune system so incubation period is big in food infection third point is duration of illness will be short as it is a chemical reaction it will show some reaction and then after if you have some anti-allergic or anti-toxic medicines it will be over whereas duration of illness as it is longer in food infection because of the fact that as microorganisms they grow they are overcoming your immune system so the fight between immune system medicines and the onset it takes large amount of time fourth point is there is a temperature in both the cases but the temperature is a subnormal body temperature in food poisoning it is not normal subnormal temperatures are there whereas in food infection high fever is achieved in food poisoning you have excessive salivation that is lal galne jala pan mantu te lal galte zar rasayanik paddhatina infection poisoning zala asel tar whereas in food infection drying of the mouth takes place drying of the mouth is a characteristic feature of food infection and salivation is a characteristic feature of food poisoning some of the examples we will be seeing in this lecture as we go on i will be talking about three types of food poisoning salmonella which is found in animals raw poultry and birds leads to salmonellosis and it is a type of food infection where the bacteria itself on the basis of the antigenic characters present on its body it gives rise to a food infection it is not food poisoning or food intoxication whereas rest of the two staphylococcus aureus i can say it is a food infection plus food intoxication because it produces a enterotoxin 
Staphylococcus aureus produces an enterotoxin and that results into Staphylococcus infection. It is found in human nose, throat, also on the skin and it is one of the predominant bacteria where wounds are there. Infection through wounds. Third example which we will be seeing today is Clostridium botulinum which is found in soil and it is associated with vegetables and meat. This is one of the most deadliest type of uh, toxin producing bacteria and botulism is the food poisoning process which is very deadly. So we will be seeing these three in our uh, discussion today. Salmonella is a bacteria which is found in the gut of humans, animals etc. So it is an intestinal organism and the food poisoning by salmonella is called as salmonellosis. It results into weakness, nausea, vomiting, fever, abdominal pain, bloating, muscle and joint pain and diarrhea. These are some of the common symptoms of salmonellosis. So let's see what this food poisoning by salmonella is all about. Salmonella food poisoning occurs from certain foods and the common sources are raw and uncooked poultry and eggs. Remember one thing, meat and meat industry, the seafood industry, these are one of the biggest sources of salmonella food poisoning or salmonellosis. Why? Because all these use animal products and these animals they harbor these organisms in their gut and intestine. Whatever may be the degree of cooking, if the cooking is not proper, then there is huge chance that the gut flora of these animals may retain the salmonella and may give rise to infection. This is one way. Second way is the person who is handling. Uh, you have to remember that World Health Organization has given a phrase anal to oral route of infection for enterobacteriaceae member bacteria. Means those bacteria which are present in the gut of the humans, they are discreted or they are removed through the anal, anal root, anus. When unhygienic practices are there, if hand washing is not proper, then this anal root bacteria will enter into the mouth through our activities because we are constantly into either defecating or eating throughout our lifetime. So, some of the common sources are the human, human practices itself, raw and undercooked poultry and eggs, raw and undercooked meat, flies and other pests. They are also sitting from there, the cross uh, breeders or the cro cross transmitters. People and animals, this is what I was saying, in the gut, they harbor these organisms and they are the major sources of contamination. Sewage and contaminated water, unclean water which is used for washing in the kitchen. I doubt that most of the unauthorized restaurants like those on the roadside Dava, uh, Dadas etc or the hawkers, street vendors, they do not follow the common sense practice of hygiene. It is very important. How can they wash their hands some 10 to 20 times a day? not possible for them and they are the biggest carriers of salmonellosis and other type of bacterial food poisoning. If you just peek in the history of salmonellosis, there was a woman in America named Mary who got to be named as Typhoid Mary, the most dangerous woman in America. This was the phrase which was given to her unfortunately because she was a person who was handling food and serving people. She was a maid and she was responsible in those times for infecting 78 people and killing 5 people. Such type of people who are having infection due to unhygienic practices and those who serve food for the communities, they are the highly infectious carriers and they pose a great risk to the people of the society. These salmonellosis so show very common symptoms of whatever the type of species infection is there. Salmonella, gastroenteritis, salmonella, indiana, there are various strains of uh, salmonella but the symptoms are common for all. Abdominal pain is there, vomiting is there, diarrhea is there, fever is there and all this takes place after 6 
hours to 48 hours of consumption of contaminated food that is the onset is delayed onset so at least six hours and two days it requires if you see the salmonella or the morphology of the salmonella it is a gram negative bacilli the length is 1 to 3 microns the width is 0.5 microns it is motile by peritricus flagella and the motility factor that is the flagella salmonella typhi in this electron microscopic structure you can see uh, is with flagella and the flagella is antigenic in nature this is a picture from one of the journals where they have given the title that salmonella is getting meaner day by day means it is developing antigenic uh, characters which will resist most of the antibiotics and most of your immune system so the best thing is to have good hygienic practices salmonella typhi has antigens on its surface there are two types of antigens somatic antigens or o antigens and flagellar antigens or h antigens these antigens are the ones which confine the pathogenicity to the organism as it grows this amount of somatic and flagellar antigen quantity will also grow with the organism and as it is there fighting with your immune system a time may come if it goes in billions it will overcome your immune system and there will be infection somatic antigens or o antigens contain long chain of polysaccharides or lps and they comprise of heat stable polysaccharides they are resistant to heat flagellar or h antigens are strongly immunogenic they induce antibody formation uh, very rapidly and you will get high titers of antigen following few hours of infection or even in the immunization you will get a high titer salmonella gastroenteritis is the common bacteria which is uh, responsible for food poisoning it can occur as a cross infection cross infection is something if you just uh, have a contaminated food and i have a spatula or a spoon and i am transferring that and mixing that in another containers this spatula can become a source of cross in contamination if i am a person contaminated and i am serving food to healthy people i become a source of cross in infection so salmonella gastroenteritis is a source which can cause cross infection it can act to give disease or illness within 24 hours it can manifest diarrhea and vomiting abdominal pain as i said these are the common symptoms of salmonellosis this can last for two to four days and sometimes it may lead to septicemia that is uh, blood and uh, formation of blood and death of the patient so the other types of salmonella which are as potent as pathogens as compared to gastroenteritis are salmonella typhimurium salmonella halder salmonella agana salmonella indiana these are commonly found in poultry meat milk milk products and uh, shells it can also cross the shell barrier of eggs chicken feeds and fecal droppings of birds poultry these as it is an intestinal organism the poultry when you are growing huge amounts of chickens they have fecal droppings and it becomes a source of that gets added in the grains which they eat and it becomes source of contamination so there is a non typhoidal salmonella also and uh, this the name itself is non typhoidal salmonella infection generally it the onset is delayed 6 days to 10 days and it may last for 2 to 7 days the infective dose is more than the salmonella means it requires large billions of cells of salmonella uh, non typhoidal salmonella are required transmission occurs via contaminated food and water the reservoir is poultry and eggs 80 percent of salmonella and non typhoid of salmonella come from poultry that is from you mainly from eggs and uh, chicken nowadays in the western world there is a huge demand for exotic pets and birds as food it is unethical unenvironmental non illegal etc but still it goes on and that becomes a source of contamination even reptiles are consumed as food in some asian countries china japan etc these reptile stools they contain salmonella bacteria and even turtles these are consumed and uh, all this becomes the source of non typhoidal salmon uh, salmonella infection okay salmonella is there but they don't give rise to typhoid but different types of uh, species they can give rise to the concept of food poisoning 
the common methods for precaution is the prevalence of common sense common sense is the biggest doctor here in such cases in order to risk, reduce the risk of salmonella food poisoning the following controls can be put into place thoroughly cook the food if you cook the food for, uh, at 70 degrees centigrade for few minutes salmonella will be easily killed keeping uh, the raw and cooked foods separate raw cooked food should be separate cooked food should be separate the container should be separate the handling techniques should be separate and all should be covered properly method of controlling uh, can also include use of clean boards cutting boards okay as you can see in the picture the board which is used if raw meat is used on the same board cooked meat is used on the same board then all types of food are used cut and processed on the same board then that board itself becomes a source for carrier so different equipments for raw and cooked foods should be used especially raw meat poultry and fish uh, are you are are coded with red board that is red board is for meat products green board is for vegetable products such color coding can be done to differentiate between uh, which type of board uh, can be used so automatically there is categorization and separation these boards should be thoroughly washed hands should be regularly dried and after touching the raw meat and poultry and after coming before and after coming from the toilet the person handling these foods should be very careful usually and ideally a antibacterial soap not all soaps are antibacterial in nature most of the times they act by surface tension and they may be called as antibacterial but there are dedicated antibacterial soaps which should be used and the water supply which is being used to clean should be clean and safe one thing which has to be remembered as i said not everybody who gets salmonella inside their body will get infected with salmonella and have salmonellosis salmonella bacteria when it is there ingested there is a particular dose it is called as the ld dose or the lethal dose which uh, which may give rise to a condition of illness although the infectious dose varies among salmonella strains among people to people a large inoculum is necessary to overcome the stomach acidity your stomach is acidic once you eat that food which is containing salmonella it has to pass the acid barrier and as it passes the acid barrier to the normal intestinal flora once it goes inside the intestine here then it will give rise to symptoms but till that time it, there are many barriers mucosal barrier is there acid barrier is there that has to be crossed large inocula are usually associated with higher rates of illness and shorter incubation periods if the consumption of contaminated food itself contains large amount of salmonella then you can assure that it is going to cause uh, disease very in a very short duration of time but if the amount of dose taken inside is less then it will take long time it has to overcome your various barriers mucosal barrier acidic barrier and the immunity barrier once that is overcome then you may have a onset which is delayed in general about about 10 rest to 6 bacterial cells are needed to cause infection if that is present that amount of dose is present in the food itself you will get salmonella immediately but if it is less and your immune system is weak then that let us say it is 10 rest to 1 bacteria means only 10 bacteria you have consumed and your immune system is weak it will get inside your body and it till the time it multiplies to 10 rest to 6 you will not show any symptoms and suddenly there will be a onset now see the lifestyle some people they always are having antacids antacid tablets and antacid things eating so that will reduce the acidity of the stomach and what happens low gastric acidity which is common in elderly persons uh, who use antacids they the dose the infectious dose is less for them 10 rest to 3 they can get the disease okay so these are some of the conditions even before vaccination the number of cells can uh, increase that is to 10 rest to 9 so different conditions gives rise to different types of dose depends upon various parameters such as the amount of bacteria present in the food the immunity and the immune system of the person who is getting consumed the lifestyle of that person on what medicines he is there all this contributes to the wearing but in general for a normal person 10 rest to 6 bacterial cells are needed to cause infection and finally i can say to avoid the salmonella type of infection simple hand hygiene and washing 
is recommended and it can reduce the several cases of typhoid all the types of typhoid can be reduced by uh, simply washing your hands properly regularly at regular interval of time with a good antimicrobial soap next part of discussion will be bacterial food poisoning by staphylococcus aureus which is a wound bacteria and it is called as staphylococcal food poisoning